Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, this is a new week and I feel so strong in my heart that the Lord wants to bless you this week. He wants to bless you. Now, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what situation you've been going through. I assure you this one thing. God sees and He knows. He knows what you're going through. And He is not deficient in ideas on how to help you. He is not. That's one thing you must know. And so this week, I feel so strong in my heart because the Lord is speaking, bless, bless, bless. He wants to bless you. But before we go into what the Lord has laid in my heart this week, I want us to call in our daily bread. And let me tell you this truth, it is the same thing. It is because He wants to bless you. And that's why He gave the instruction. So can we call for that daily bread? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand today for my daily bread. I demand because Jesus told me to. And therefore I receive from you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear me? It is coming. See, we do this every day. And thank you for those of you that have been sharing your testimonies. And I keep getting these testimonies saying that, oh, I just noticed that things have just been working out for me. See, every obedience to God counts. Sometimes you don't have to know exactly what that obedience is doing. Because many times the work of God in our lives, you may not notice it immediately. But after a while, you will look back and by the Spirit of God, because sometimes... It takes the Spirit of God to make you even realize that this is what is causing this to happen. Because these are spiritual things. Like I always say this, sometimes people don't know the source of their miracle or who labored for their miracle. People don't know. You know, somebody might see you going through a challenge and he takes it up in prayer. And every day he's praying for you. You may not even know the person, but he just saw that there was a challenge and he took it as a concern. And he begins to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And he may be praying for you every day for like three months without even telling you. And then one day you walk into a meeting. Now let's put, let's talk about this, you know, church wise now. You walk into a meeting and the pastor mentions your case and tells you today your challenge is over. And you say, Amen. And truly speaking, you go back home and you get a call and you realize that everything is over. And you know how life is. You give, most likely, give the credit to the pastor who today mentioned your case. But you don't realize that before that happened, someone has been watching the ground for the past three months non-stop. You see that now? See, that's why man's reward is always different from God's reward. And that's why when, you know, even as ministers, we don't take the glory for things that happen. We don't take the glory for it. Because you don't know what God has been doing behind the scene. That's why all glory goes to Him. Why? Because He's the one behind the scene instructing everyone. The one who saw three months ago and began to pray, it was not of His own volition. It was the Spirit of God that ministered it in His heart. And He took it up in prayer. He was praying that long because it was a burden given to Him by the Spirit. The one who stood to minister three months later and heard in his spirit concerning your case and he didn't think it was his mind. 
but he obeyed the Spirit of God and he mentions it. It was complete obedience to the Holy Spirit. And you also, having heard your case, did not think that, oh, it's someone else that he's talking about. But you decided, oh, this is me he's talking to. And I receive it by faith. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. You also obeyed. That's why, see, we honor men, yes. But you see, we don't ascribe that glory to any man. All that glory goes to him. We thank everybody for the role they played. Because the truth is this. Most times, the people that play the real role, you may not know. Except God opens your eyes to see them. And that's why you must accept this as truth. It is God's desire to bless you. And he's doing everything to bless you. Why did it take three months? We may not be able to explain that. But God sees all things. He knows. And he is walking behind the scene for it. Some may have taken five years. Some may have taken one year. But one thing is sure. When the time comes and God visits you, that thing is surely going to be permanent. It's surely going to be permanent. See, that's why you must never give up. Don't ever give up. If you give up, I tell you this truth, you may just not know. The miracle might just be the next day. A perfect example of the story in the Bible. There was famine in the land of Samaria. No food. The city was on lockdown because their enemies were outside. And it got to a day, some two women couldn't take it anymore. They decided to start eating their children. So they said, okay, today we'll boil your own child and eat. Tomorrow we'll boil your own. But hey, guess what? They didn't know that this whole situation was going to turn around just in two days. They didn't know. They didn't know. Sometimes patience will do it. Just be patient. It's how long will I wait? Listen to me. Just wait a little more. Just wait a little more. Nobody can tell you exactly. But you see, as long as you have faith and hope in your heart, don't ever let that go. God is a miracle worker. At the end of the day, everyone will be sorted out. Why? Because it is not man's doing. As preachers, we preach, we pray, we minister. But the real worker of this thing is the Lord who sees what the preacher doesn't see. Jesus said, the Father in me, he is the one that's doing the work. Even as I'm ministering right now, he is the one that is doing the work. He's the one that is making my words to make sense in your heart. Without him, I'll be blabbing. But even as I speak right now, he's the one ministering in your heart. He's the one telling you that preacher is talking about you, listening to him. Truly, without him, we can do nothing. That's why I charge you today, don't give up yet. It's not time to give up. It doesn't matter the magnitude of the, of the challenge. It doesn't matter how long you've been waiting for the challenge. Some of you are waiting for so long for your husbands to change. Some of you are waiting for so long for your wife to understand what you're trying to show them or explain to them. Some of you are waiting for your children to change. It doesn't matter what the cause of the challenge is. Hear me. Because God is involved, the end will be better. Don't say, oh, I've waited for so long. If our situation is getting worse, listen, it doesn't matter how worse the situation has become. It will take Jesus to solve it. And when he does, he does it good. Let me read a scripture to you. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. Now this is Jesus stuck in here. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I feel the anointing of God's Spirit on me right now. This is Jesus speaking. And it's an invitation. Look at what he says. He says, come to me, 
all you who labor and are heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest. What an invitation. He says, come. If you labor, are you laboring? What kind of labor are you doing? Some of you labor in prayers. Some of you even labor in worries. When I mean labor in worries, you've been going from one place to the other. That is labor. Looking for how this problem will be solved. Some of you have been going to different people complaining. And, and sincerely in your heart, sometimes you just want to express yourself. You just want to talk. You just need an ear to listen to you. You are laboring. Some of you are spending money. Maybe it's a health challenge. You're spending money. Or your business money is coming in. You already know that this portion is going for this medical bill. So your life has been such that you have to manage with the rest. You are laboring. Whatever challenge it is, some of you are paying debts that you didn't really, really plan to take. Situations forced you in that situation. Now in that, to make that decision. And now you have to live with the consequences. Or maybe it's even your mistake. You made mistakes in the past and now you're paying for it. You're laboring. And Jesus made that invitation to you. He says, come, come, come. It is not a man that is calling you, it's Jesus that is calling you. He called you to come to him. He didn't say come to any particular church. He didn't say come to any particular man of God. Jesus said, come to me, come to me. Have you responded to that call yet? Today, I'm re-echoing the voice of Jesus, even as he says, come. And when you come, with all your labor, with all those things that are heavy on you, he says, I will do one thing for you. I will give you rest. He didn't say the pastor will give you rest. He didn't say the church will give you rest. Many have looked for rest in the church and they did not find it. The church didn't promise rest. Many have thought, oh, this man of God has power. He will help me. But he didn't help. He didn't say the man of God will give you rest. He says, I, Jesus, will give you rest. The church is there to point you to him. The man of God is there to point you to him. But if you don't see him, you will not have rest. So don't say, oh, I've been in this church for so long. My situation did not change. Maybe you stopped at the church. Oh, I've known this pastor for so long. My situations did not change. Maybe you stopped at the man of God. But the man of God was a signboard to show you to Jesus. And until you see Jesus, don't stop. Don't stop. Look for the rest that only Jesus gives. And even today, if you will only hear his voice and say to him, Lord Jesus, these are my burdens. These are my labors. And today, I'm answering this call. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. I'm casting all this whole care that I've been carrying. I'm casting it on you. I need the rest that you give. If you will answer that call today and say, Jesus, give me that rest. I'm telling you the truth. He will give you nothing less than the rest that he promised. And what does it mean rest? Rest from every struggle. He already knows you've been laboring. He already knows you're carrying a heavy burden on you. He knows. So when he says rest, he is not just saying, I will assist you to carry that body. He said, I will give you rest. Rest means rest. Rest means being free from those situations. Rest means that thing that have made you frown for many years. Your joy will be restored to you. That is what Jesus promised. And you know what? You shouldn't get anything less than what Jesus promised. So today I invite you. And I pray for you that indeed 
the Spirit of God will carry you right now and put you in the place where you will enjoy His rest. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the Lord put His hand upon you, that hand that is soothing, that will bring rest to your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Rest is coming to everyone under the sound of my voice right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Listen, I know my time is up, but it doesn't mean Jesus have stopped giving the rest because I have stopped. Truly, he will give you rest in the name of Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, have the best day ever. Bye-bye.